guys, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know, my name is Nicole. I am a homeschool mom to three girls. So I wanted to do a review, kind of flip through thing of Sassafras um, Science Adventures Volume 1 Zoology. And the reason I wanted to do that was because when I was researching science, um, science was the most difficult curriculum for me to find and pick. And um, I think it's partially because I feel the most insecure about science. Um, excuse me. So I, although I took science through middle school and high school and college even, um, I feel insecure about science. So picking a science curriculum was very difficult. If you want to find out more about what I think about Sassafras science, please stay tuned to listen to more. Okay, so the Sassafras science adventure is kind of like a Charlotte Mason science. So you get a um, textbook, which is just a story. You get the Sassafras guide, and this has the lesson plans. Here is a picture. A lesson plan for if you want to do two days a week or five days a week. Um, and it tells you what to do, what to talk about, what to research, what activities, what crafts, what um, little um, experiments or whatever. So this is what it looks like. It is a black and white book. And then in the appendix, you got lab report sheets. You get pictures, um, little habitats that you can copy and create for your kids, and then glossary of terms. So this and this, if you want to use this, are a great resource. Um, we also purchased the Skidat guide. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I think I am. And um, this has this. So it has this where you fill out the animal's name, classification, food, location found, and then information. And it has information about a different location. Um, so it has coloring and research opportunities for your kids. With this, um, the, oops, sorry, the curriculum also suggests buying an encyclopedia of animals, and it has a couple listed. This is the one I picked off of their list, the DK Encyclopedia of Animals. The reason I picked this one was it was the cheapest on thrift books. So, to be completely honest, I got it from thrift books because these suckers are expensive. Okay, so the textbook that comes with this curriculum looks like this. It is not a textbook. It is a story and it is about Blaine and Tracy. They are twins who have not been doing very well in their science class. So they are sent to live with uh, during the summer with their uncle Cecil who is a scientist and inventor. Um, there are a couple pictures in here. Very black and white. Mostly just reading. This is actually a perfect page. So, Uncle Cecil has created these zip lines, the invisible zip lines, that can take you anywhere in the world and um, the kids can learn about stuff. So, this is zoology. This is a picture of the zip line. Isn't that cute? Um, this is zoology. So, he sends them places to learn about animals. And, um, it's awesome. It's presented like a story, kind of like a living book. It's great. Um, I picked this curriculum after picking a different science curriculum for specifically my seven-year-old. Um, and it was a little bit more, a slightly more traditional. And I was noticing that the curriculums that were presented in stories and in books um, with a story um, she was retaining stuff a lot more. So that's why I purchased this. So when we started this, I would read, I would follow the guide. We did the activities or crafts or experiments with this. And then I would have her fill out the skidat, which again looks like this. Okay. She hated it. My four-year-old didn't want to listen to the story and my seven-year-old hated doing this. Sorry, if you hear my dog, she's being very loud, so I apologize. But, so, what we ended up doing was we ended up scratching this and being like, this get at book is too hard. It's a lot of reading. It's a lot of research. You're supposed to look stuff up in this to find out more, to fill out the information in this. And it's just a little too much. I thought it was going to be a little bit more coloring, but it's a lot of just filling out information. So then we would let her 
color her answers or draw her answers, but it started to become like where this took like 30 minutes because it was hard for her. She was only seven and it, she's not the strongest writer and she definitely is not good at researching and we would have to sit there and help her figure it out and it just was really stressful. So then we were using this and this. And this has the uh, schedule, the um, uh, activities, the uh, uh, experimenty kind of things. <clears throat> I thought she would like it. She's very artsy. It has a lot of art stuff in it. Again, she hated it and couldn't stand doing it. And with my four-year-old, I mean, that that's not even possible to get her to focus on that. She wanted, my four-year-old and my seven-year-old, every time we would say we have an activity or an experiment to do, they were super excited, but they were very underwhelmed by them and um, not excited by them at all. I'm trying to think. Um, they It's really cool, though. They do give you all the uh, items needed, this procedure examples and all of that, so and instructions. So this is a really good guide if you have kids who like it. My kids just didn't like it. So then we got rid of this, and we got rid of this, and we were just reading this as a read aloud. We didn't even make it. We didn't make it. I want to know how the story ends. I want to learn more about it. I want to do it. But I could not get my kids to focus during this. I could not let, get them to under, like, pay attention. They didn't like it. And if I said we were going to do science, they'd get really excited. And then I'd pull out this and they would freak out. They did not like this. They found it to be boring. So my thoughts, do your research. Um, they have examples on their website. Um, you can even go to, it says www.sassafrasscience.com to find out more. They have examples. They have some of the book on audio where you can listen to it. They have um, examples of it. And you need to decide if it's going to work for your kid because i got to tell you, it does not work for mine at all. Which I'm sad about. I'm holding on to my pile of sassafras science for possibly a future date, possibly a one of my younger students would like to do it in the future. Um, I'm definitely holding on to this as possible read aloud at some point or a book they can read. I think it's interesting. Um, I'm slightly disappointed because in Sassafras, they have a bunch of options. They have like zoology, they have botany, anatomy, um, I think geology. Like they have really cool different books that are these two twins going and um, experiencing whatever science they're supposed to be learning about. And I like that idea. So down the line as my kids get older, maybe it will just be like a read aloud reinforcement kind of thing. The curriculum as a whole doesn't work for us, but I could see where it could work really well for a family um, that likes notebooking and um, likes more of the Charlotte Mason approach, I guess. I don't really know. Um, I know that there's families that would love this. Ours just isn't. So, um, we had to scratch sassafras. I am sad about it. My kids are not sad about it. They are glad to be done with it. It will be on a back shelf in my house um, for possibly a future date or someday to uh, donate or get rid of. So, anyway, those are my kind of quick thoughts on sassafras, which is a cute curriculum. Does not work at all for my family. So, Please leave comments or whatever about what science you use um, and tell me what you think. Yeah, I mean, science is a hard one. Science is hard to pick. So uh, leave comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.